So this morning you're going to hear from a few of our youth. Um, the first couple are going to come up and just give you a little bit about camp and about their experience there and what expectations they had um, and how they handled those. So, Will and his camp. Um, before I left for camp, I was really having high expectations and I wanted to get closer a closer relationship with God and other people in the youth group. So I prayed for everything to go well. When I got there, I was really nervous to lift my hands up during worship, and I was nervous to share during prayer and share. So I prayed about it and talked with God. I started not to be nervous throughout the week. Through the week, I got more comfortable with the group and with Drew since he was still new, and so that was good. I could feel myself maturing and getting closer with God through the whole week. As a youth group, it was nice to see everyone getting closer and really giving Drew a chance. When I was at camp, I was at peace. I didn't have many worries. And I loved getting closer with everyone through small groups and activities. This camp has done so good for me and has made an impact on my life. I feel like it's the same for everyone else. I am so thankful that I got to go to camp. Every, everything that I wanted to happen did, and even more than I expected. This camp is so amazing and life-changing. It has been one of my best times in my life. And now after this, I feel like I'm going to go out into the world and show the love of Jesus. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, before I get into it, uh, I'd just like to thank this church for the opportunity to go on something like this. Uh, it's Epworth Forest Camp and uh, the mission trip. And second of all, um, I feel great to hear Pete play the drums. Because when you're in New York and Central Park, a lot of people who think they have talent come out and try to express that talent. And sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, but I'll get right into it. Um, camp has always been something I look forward to throughout the year. It's always something that kind of renews me and gives me a fresh start to the year. Um, so I'll tell you how camp kind of works. Um, we got there on Sunday uh, evening, and initially we just kind of got all our bearings together, you know, made our beds and got set up, tried to make the week comfortable. Um, and then we had an evening worship type deal where um, we have an amazing band, amazing speaker, and we just kind of gather together and kind of get comfortable with what we're going to be experiencing that week. And then after that, we um, had our own church time where we kind of got closer, uh, more closely connected to each other in fellowship and could worship Christ through our own band and um, just enjoy our time together. And then we fell asleep at like 2 in the morning and woke up at 8. And if you wanted to run... Uh, because I'm in cross country, we would always start at like, wake up at 6.30 the first day and then wake up at 8 the rest of the days because <laughs> running is not fun. Um, and then Monday and the weekdays, um, we would wake up, uh, have breakfast at 8, and then we would have um, worship at 9.30, which is like the evening worship that I mentioned. Um, and then we would have learning labs, which is a, an area of the day where... Um, you're given a few options, um, and then you go to various locations in the camp, and then you just study a more in-depth to uh, in depth topic. And then we had lunch, and then free time, and you would always find me playing Ultimate Frisbee, because that's my favorite. Um, and then we would have um, evening worship, and then our own group time. And um, on Thursday, um, our last full day, we had our uh, own groups, um, Commitment, commitment day, and um, it, it's one of my favorite times of camp because we all um, gather um, and we gather in a circle and we just kind of pray over each other and just um, list what we're struggling through throughout throughout our lives and um, it's so great because this youth group is our family and we just feel so comfortable being able to express um, our issues and um, following that we. We prayed over each other, and it's such an amazing experience because you just feel the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit's presence with you in that room. And um, that's just something I'd like to share. Um, 
it's really gotten me prepared for the rest of the year, um, prepared to share Christ's love in um, school, everyday experiences, and I just want to thank the church for that. Thank you. Good morning. To start out with the mission trip, I think that real st- it all started when, as soon as we got home from camp. We were all super excited, and like both Will and Isabel said, all of our expectations were met at camp and more. And so we were all super excited to go on this mission trip, and we were all looking forward to the ride, kind of. And so we all got in our vans and headed 14 hours over to New York. When we finally got there, we were all tired of being in the vans, and we were all just excited to go out and do God's work. When we first got there, it was kind of, we all went in there, just got everything unpacked, got everything in our rooms, and then we all went into this one room, and they kind of got in there and just started telling us the rules. And when they were going through everything, we were all kind of looking around, just like trying to figure out like what's going on. And when it was over, some of the rules that they said kind of made us felt like they were t- like treating us like we were little kids. And so at the very beginning, the first couple of days, all of us were kind of upset with everything and just frustrated and think it's going to be a horrible week. And as the week went on, we all started to realize that when we went there and they told us all the rules and everything, when we, the reason we got upset was because we weren't thinking that we we're going to be there to serve. We were thinking of ourselves more than that. And so at the very beginning, we were all just selfish and we were upset about that we couldn't be on our phones at night and we couldn't like, have food with us any time. It was like some of those little rules that made everybody mad and think that it was going to be a horrible week. It made us mad because we were being selfish about it. But as the week went on, every morning we'd wake up, go have breakfast, and then we'd go do some devotionals. And then after that, we'd all get back together and go to our work sites. And for some people, that would be going to an assistant living home or this place called Kids Club or helping the Salvation Army. And there's all different kinds of stuff that your group would go to. Uh, the first couple of days, I went to Kids Club, which is a bunch of kids go there either if their parents, it's kind of like a daycare type thing where their kids go there if their parents need them to or just if they want to. And the, the first day there, it was a little rough just because we didn't know any of the kids and they were a little crazy, but then as the day went on, it got a lot better. But for me, there was this one kid who would never talk, and he was always just kind of like sitting by himself. No one really knew his name to start with either. And I, I tried to talk to him the whole first day and try to get him to say something, but he would just sit in the corner the whole time, and we, we never got him to say anything. But then as the, then the next day came, and... I was still messing with him, trying to get him to talk, and nothing ever happened. But in the last like hour, he threw something and it hit me, and then it hit my foot, and I said, "Ow!" And he started laughing so hard, and it was like the funniest thing. And so for the rest of the day, I was just playing with him and messing around, and he was talking and laughing. And for me, that was just the coolest thing, and that was the moment where I realized that we're there for a reason and why we're there. And just seeing that kid go from having like no fun at all to having the most fun laughing and like screaming and having fun was just the coolest thing for me. That just opened up my eyes to realize why we're actually there. And it's not to, like, obviously we're there to help God and to spread His Word, but I think we're all just thinking selfishly. And as the week went on, the next couple days I went to the assistant living home. And when we got there, it was... When we first walked in, we were supposed to have somebody like tell us like what to do and all that stuff, but all the people were in meetings and so we kind of just went in there not really knowing what's going on. And so me and a couple of my friends went over and we sat down next to a guy to start talking to him. And we sat down and said hi and started talking to him. And he just kind of like ignored us and then eventually just got up and walked away. And we were all just kind of sitting there like, okay, now what? Because we tried to talk to this guy and he just like leaves us. And so we all kind of sat there for like five, ten minutes just in silence, not really saying anything. Because after that, we didn't know what to do. And from there... We started going around talking to some people again, and it was just awesome how some of their stories and what they've gone through is just amazing. Some of them I can't imagine how they can still be there, because they were all happy, and what they've gone through, there's no way I could be there and be happy. But in particular, there was this one guy there who was, he was an elder guy, and he was there, and he said that he's been in there since he was like 50, or I think he said 45, and I was talking to him, and it just amazed me on how You'd ask him a question, and he'd have no clue what the answer is, whether it happened like yesterday or forever ago. And it's just so sad seeing people like that, because at the very end, I asked him how old he was, and he said he couldn't remember. He said that he just knew that he went in there when he was about 45, and he said he couldn't remember anything, really. And I don't know, to me, that was just so sad of how you can't remember anything, but you can still live your life super happy and inside. 
And then also as the week went on, we went to, on Thursday, which was our last day of serving, we went back to the kids club with our whole group and we had like a cookout for the whole community. And that was just kind of like our finishing thing there. And seeing all the kids there and how happy they were to see all of us again, that was also very cool. And especially during that time, it kind of showed us how from the first day we got there, everybody wanted to go home. Everyone was just like, okay, I'm tired of this trip already. And by the end of the week, I think there were a lot of us who were wanting to stay there and who were just very touched by the whole experience and glad it happened. And I just think it's awesome on how we can go there and think this is going to be the worst week ever. I just want to go home to God really working through us and having everybody at least touch one person and know they did. And I thought that was just very cool. And I think everyone ended up having a great time at this trip. Um, so, so you know, New York was definitely not what I expected, but because of that, I learned how to better, hand, better handle things as they come. I think a lot of us expected this trip to be more like Costa Rica, but it definitely wasn't. It was New York City, and it was very different from what any of us are used to. There were a lot of long car rides with horrible traffic, tiring days, and hardly any free time. So there were a lot of people complaining, including me. But in truth, it's during these times where we should rely on God to pull us through and focus on the real reason why we are where we are. One Bible verse that relates to this is Colossians 3.1, which states, Since then you have been raised in Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. What this means is that instead of texting, playing on Facebook, and uh, playing games on our phones, we should focus more on God and what he wants us to do. And that's exactly what this week taught us. It taught us to get over the thoughts of material things and to focus on serving others and showing the love of God. And I think we did that. You could tell by looking at the faces of the people we talked to on the street, the kids laughing and playing at Kids Club, and the elderly we visited at the assisted living facilities that we had made their day, which is amazing. One way I personally did this was by using my Spanish to communicate with the non-English speakers at Kids Club and at the soup kitchen we volunteered at. And even though my Spanish isn't that great, I could have basic conversation with them, and you could tell how happy they were that someone new could communicate with them and speak their language. So despite the fact that we had to sleep on floors and couldn't always shower when we wanted to and hardly had any free time, I think we really made an impact on the community, and that's what matters. Well, <clears throat> let me just say that both of these weeks were an adventure. I mean, to say the least. Um, I, I, I guess you all know that uh, my wife Heather and I and, and little Liam arrived uh, two weeks ago yesterday and then two weeks ago today, headed off to camp. And then came back, was here for about a day, and then off to New York, and just got back last night at 9.30. And, uh, you know, okay, I don't know if you all have seen this show or heard of this show, but uh, if, if you've ever seen or heard of the show The Big Bang Theory, raise your hand. My favorite show, my absolute favorite show. And uh, there's a character on it called Sheldon Cooper. And if you don't know, it, well, first of all, if you don't know the show, it's about these four physicists. They're huge nerds. It's a, it's a sitcom, and it's about all the crazy experiences they have. Well, Sheldon is probably the nerdiest of them all. He has no social skills whatsoever. And he's having a conversation with someone, and that person says, why don't you try to get out of your comfort zone? And he says, why? It's called a comfort zone for a reason. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of what trips like this are for. They're to take us out of where things are comfortable. Take us away from home, away from all the comforts that we're accustomed to. Because as was in uh, the scripture that Lucy read from Colossians, we've got to get our minds and our hearts set on things above, 
not unearthly things. And it's so easy to get so caught up in the earthly things, the things like texting and, you know, watching TV, taking a shower whenever you want, uh, air conditioning, you know, all the things that we're used to. Being comfortable makes us complacent. So sometimes you've got to shake it up. Things have to be shaken up in order to set our minds and our hearts on God. That's what happened these two weeks. We had an opportunity to let go of the things that so often distract us. There was a speaker who spoke at camp all throughout the week. I believe his name was Ben. I forget his last name. He was fond of triangles to explain everything. But one of the triangles I remember pretty well. And it illustrated the different aspects of, of relationships in the Christian life. And he talked about reaching up to God. Reaching in to the people in the church community. And reaching out to a hurting world. And the kids... Who and the adults who went on these two trips had the opportunity to do all three of those things. When I think of the reaching in, I think of both trips. At camp, they had opportunities to play together, whether it was ultimate frisbee or paintball. I still have an injury from that. <laughs> or the bonding experience that we had during that share circle that Will mentioned. There's an opportunity to solidify our relationships, to create a safe place where we can look out for each other and be bound together by Christ's love. And you know, it wasn't just people from our church. When we were in Queens, when we were in New York, we got to relate to kids and adults from other churches. There was one from Wisconsin, one from Minnesota, with whom we disagreed on the pronunciation of bag. <laughs> bag, bag. But we were able to get to know people not only from different churches, but even different traditions within the Christian faith. There was a Catholic group, there was a Lutheran group. It was a beautiful picture of the unity of the Christian family. But we also had the opportunity to reach up. That was especially true at camp. There's an opportunity for the kids to get away from distractions and spend time in the presence of God. The learning labs that were mentioned earlier were an opportunity to expand their knowledge of God and of the Christian life. The morning and evening worship was an opportunity to spend time in the presence of God in reckless abandonment to the work of God's Holy Spirit. And then reaching out. That was most certainly what the mission trip to Queens was about. You see, if we put our hearts on heavenly things, that doesn't mean we completely forget about earthly things. But by having a heart set on heavenly things, we have Christ's heart. And we start to care about those things that He cares about. Things are put into perspective. Suddenly those earthly things don't have value in and of themselves, but they have value insofar as Christ cares about them. Christ cares about people who have a hard time finding a place to eat. Christ cares about families who parents have to go to work and have no place to leave their children. Christ cares about elderly who may never get visits from family. And we, the adults, 
and the youth who went on this trip had the opportunity to touch those people's lives. But you know what? They weren't the only ones who were having their lives touched. Because let me tell you right now, the group that came home is not the same group that went. All of our lives have been touched and changed forever. I thank this whole church for giving us the opportunity to go on this trip, both of them. Because let me tell you right now, it will make a lasting impact on a lot of people's lives. Perhaps, and most hopefully, an eternal one. So thank you.